Hey there, welcome back to Taking Trades. In today's video, we're diving into volatility and I'm gonna show you how to use it to trade options against any stock or ETF that you're maybe interested in. And we're also gonna dive into how to locate the different types of volatility on the Tastyworks platform and kind of talk about what each one of those numbers mean. So let's dive into this. I have Tesla up and the first thing you can see is I've got the options chain and you might be wondering, okay, well, what is volatility and, and why is it on the platform? What, what difference does it make? And the reason it's on the platform is that it basically reflects the level of fear in the market. And not only does it reflect the fear in the market, it can reflect the fear to the upside or the downside. You can get an idea of a term called volatility skew, meaning the puts or the calls might be priced with more fear than the other. So if we go to Tesla real quick, and I just basically look at similar deltas. So a typical play for me might be to sell this 20 delta call, I'm sorry, put, and then to come over here and sell the 20 delta, let's go right here, sell the call. So we got the 20 delta put and then the 19 delta call. And what you can see first off is that if I just look at the bid price, let's look at the bid price for this, if I get $20.35 for this call, you would maybe expect, okay, I'll probably get $20.35 on the other side. But if we look over there, I get $27.50. So this is a little juicier. This is a little more enticing to sell the put because I get paid more. Well, then you gotta reflect a little and say, why would they be willing to pay me more to sell that put? Here's the reason why. Let's look at the chart. Tesla has gone to the moon. This is the reason why the put is juicier than the call. Because with such an extreme move, the idea or opinion is that Tesla's maybe overstretched and that it will pull back. So if it pulls back, you're likely to get breached or touched on your strike. So they wanna make it worth your while. So if we come in and we look at the 890 put, they're pricing it heavier because you're taking more risk. All volatility is, is a measure of fear against time or in relation to time. Whether it's one week out, two weeks out, a month out. And I can give you an example of that real quick. So this was 51 days out and it's priced, let's just look at this. Total price for the 20 delta put and call combined, making it a strangle, is $48.45. So let's go back, let's clear this out. 48.45 was our number. Let's go to the 23 day. And let's go to the 20 delta here. And let's go to the 20 delta over here. So we were getting $48.45 to take 51 days worth of risk. But for 23 days, we get paid $35.80. The reason for that is it's just less time. You're exposed to the markets for a lesser period of time. And in this case, the 20 delta is paying about 19 and a quarter on the put side. But if we go to the call side, it's paying 1630. So even 23 days out, Tesla's still being priced as being a little juicier on the put side, meaning there could be an anticipation of a down move coming because of Tesla's extreme move to the upside. So that's kind of the basics of volatility. If you've never heard of volatility or you're confused about it, just think of it as fear. It's the price that fear creates within the options markets. If you see a meme stock, here might be a good example. Let's look at DWAC, DWAK. Is it DWAC or D? Let's go see. This is one that's had a ton of volatility recently. And if we look at the option trading prices here, let's go 51 days. So Tesla, a thousand dollar stock-ish in the area, was trading, you know, at uh, 48, 45, 51 days out, 20 delta. If we go roughly 20 delta here, we can get, where's 20 delta? Right there. We can get $15. And this stock is only $66. So you can see this is priced very juicy. And the reason for that is because it's very unpredictable and we don't know anything about it. This isn't even a company. This is just a holding space for money looking for a company. So if we come here and we look and see this erratic move, if you ever see stocks that are moving crazily like this, they're likely gonna have higher volatility 
And in relation to that, they're going to have higher option prices. So I want to use this to segue right into my next topic real quick, which is what do you do with volatility? Well, the idea is if you can sell option premium, meaning come out here and let's go back to our 51 day strangle. Let's go 20 delta and we'll put on the 20 delta again on this side. If I sell this for 48.30, what I'm hoping to happen is I want volatility to have a drop for a moment. I want it to come back down because when it drops, the prices go down, which means if I sell it for $48 and I buy it back for $38, that means I can keep the $10 in between and then look for another stock that has higher IV. These are volatility waves, and this is how I trade. I trade from one volatility wave to the next, and I'm gonna give you a perfect example from today. So last night, I put on an earnings trade in Twitter, and here's the interesting thing. If I go to the chart, and let's type in Twitter, uh, IVR. Now, this you can only do this on the Tastyworks platform. And if you're interested in a Tastyworks account, there is a link in the description of this video. I welcome you to click it, fund that account with $2,000, and my channel will actually get a credit. I really appreciate that. So if I click enter with Twitter.IVR, this is actually a measurement only of the volatility. So you can see yesterday, if I zoom this in a little bit, we were upwards of... Well, at one point, we got to a volatility of 51 and a half. We could look over here and see it. 51 and a half. And then after the binary event, meaning earnings, this morning, it crushed all the way down into the 16, 15 handle right in there. So option prices, like we talked about on Tesla, might have been $48 up here. And then when it dropped down here, prices might have been $38, $35, something in there. So then you buy it back and that closes the position. You sell to open, buy to close, keep the money in between. So with Twitter specifically, I was able to get in this, and I'll actually show it to you real quick. If I type in Twitter. Okay, so for Twitter, if I open this up, so you can actually see what I did. This is the trade I put on yesterday. So you can see 1026 at 109 p.m. I went ahead and I sold the 5272 strangle. That's the put, that's the call. I sold it for $1.15. So this brought in $115. And then this morning when the markets opened, because Twitter didn't move too much, it stayed between 52 and 72, I then bought it back for $25. And I kept the $90 in between. So that's the idea of volatility, is that you want it to be high to sell into, and low to buy it back. When you hear people talking about buying options, buying calls, buying puts, you wanna do that when option premium, or you wanna do that when volatility is low because you're hoping for an expansion in volatility. But here's the thing, the only mean reverting metric in option trading that I'm aware of is volatility contraction. So when volatility gets really high and pumped up, I know that at some point it's going to come back down and mean revert. Now, the true, now the, the opposite isn't as true or likely. If volatility is very low and I buy a bunch of calls and puts, there's no real guarantee that it's going to go up again. It could go months and months and months and not move. But if you get a spike higher, the likelihood is that it is going to sag back down. It tends to spike near earning events. It tends to spike into news events. Sometimes if there's an uncertainty in the news or the markets, multiple stocks in different sectors will spike. You can sell into that and then wait for things to calm and then buy them back and keep the difference. That's selling option premium 101 right there. So now that you've been drinking from the fire hose with all this, I just wanna show you where to get your IV ranks, okay? This is, and your IV percentiles. And it's really easy to see on this watch list. So today for earnings, I'm gonna remove this one. I'm watching a few of these stocks and Twilio is one that I'm watching. So Twilio has an IV percent of 25. Not super high, but not super low. Currently, I kind of follow the tasty mechanics, tasty trade mechanics as far as what's an acceptable level to sell premium into. And I do believe that the IV percentage needs to be 
above 20. If you're below 20, that's very, very low. And what that means is that this is IV percent can go can go up to 100 percent, and when you have that, you know that you're very high. So if you had a stock like upwards of 80 percent or 85 percent, you know that's a very high IV percentage. But you might ask yourself, what does that mean in relation to the stock itself? So if you tell me that Twilio has an IV percentage of 25. That doesn't mean anything to me until I understand Twilio's range. Like where does Twilio usually go? Is 25% high for Twilio or is 25% low? Well, what you can do is you can actually compare Twilio against itself. And this is a little confusing, but let me just kind of give you a reference here. Let's say that Twilio goes to 50% and to 0% in the last 12 months. So in the previous 12 months, it went as low as zero and as high as 50. Well, what you then do is you say, what's the current percentage of Twilio? If Twilio is currently at 50, then the IV rank would be 100% because 50 is as high as it went in the last 12 months. So that's 100% of its range. So you can take IV percentage compared against where it's been in the last year and you can get a percentage of the range. Where has Twilio been over the past year? And that's the playing field. And then where is Twilio right now? And that becomes the percentage of where it's been in its range. So right now, Twilio is at 25%, which is 32.3% of its last trailing 12 months range. If you have questions about this, drop me a comment below and I'll be happy to explain further and try and make it simpler. But just think of it as, IV rank is where it is in its range, 32% of its range. So that tells me that if 25% is 32% on the IV rank, it's likely Twilio has gone above 100% over the past 12 months. You can have an IV rank greater than 100%. That's possible. Doesn't happen all the time, but, but it definitely did last year during the unwind. So you can get higher numbers and higher spikes like that. So you can see your IV percent here and IVR here. And if you click this gear, you can choose it out of this panel here to put whatever you want on this side. You just click one of these and it'll come over to the other side. If you don't want it, you click it again, it goes away. But that's how you can structure that to see IV rank and IV percentage. The other way you can do it is you can look up here you can get IV rank right here. And the other way that I like to look at things during earnings and such is you can look at the monthly IV levels, which are all along here. So if you're looking to sell premium and you notice that you're selling premium and let's say it's 50%, but then every expiration after that is 55%, then you've got something backwards there and that means that IV is likely to go up, not down. So you don't wanna sell into that. You would possibly wanna buy into that. But you can see here, Twilio has earnings. So if I sell the two-day options at 123% monthly IV or on this weekly IV panel, and then I look beyond it, look out here. 37 days from now, we should be, it's, it's calculated at being around 48%, which is quite an IV drop, which would make the option prices cheaper so that I can go back in and buy them out close the position and keep the difference between where I sold it and where I bought it. And that's basically IV in a nutshell. If you're interested in an indicator, you can actually come in here and I believe type in volatility and there's this HL volatility. If you double click that and close out of here, you can kind of get this high low volatility so you can see that yes, it was up here near 14, now it's down here at 11 today. And you can see at the bottom, it tells you what day. So it looks like it's been dropping. That's one indicator you can use to measure things. Another one is, I believe you can do, um, there's standard deviation. You can get in all kinds of different things with volatility to measure it on your platform. But if you don't wanna have that, you can also come over to this panel and you can come in here. There's a volatility 
increase. So there's an IV index five day change. You can click this and you can see now the five day change right here. You can tell if a stock has been going up or down in volatility over the last five days. So if you see an increase volatility climbing in something pretty big, like let's, um, let's maybe put in that DWAC and see if that, see what that looks like. Oh, okay. It hasn't been registered yet. Oh, cause I don't think it's been out for five days. That's not a good example, but if you had one that was increasing over the last five days, it would show what percentage it's up or down right here. And that's just another helpful way to look at volatility on your Tastyworks trading platform. So you've got it on the front screen in your watch lists. You can put in indicators for it. And the thing you need to know about volatility is you sell premium into it when it's high, you buy back your positions to close them out when it gets low, much like surfing on a wave. You want to surf when the wave is high and rolling. When the wave crash, it crashes, you want to end your ride. And then once it's done, you take the money in between, you rinse and repeat, and then you start over again with another stock or you wait for the same stock's volatility to rise again. So you don't want to blindly just be selling premium on any stock. You want to make sure vol is high so that you can get good premium and then watch it crush and buy it back because then you don't have to care about the movement of the stock. You don't care if it goes up or down. You just want ball to crush. I hope this was helpful. Drop me a comment below. Ask me any questions that you have, and we'll see you in episode three coming up soon for the 10 principles of options trading. I'm Jimmy. Have a great day.